Well, good morning and welcome to the Elk Grove Church of Christ. Happy Mother's Day. We're so blessed that you're joining us this morning. We're glad that we can be out here in God's creation to give you another uh, worship service. And so today uh, we want to bless all those. If you have a birthday, happy birthday. Uh, if you have an anniversary again, may God bless your marriage many, many more years. Um, why don't we, we could do this together. Let's sing uh, the happy birthday song. I'm going to throw in anniversaries there too. Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true. May the Lord richly bless you. Happy birthday to you. And anniversaries as well. We're just really thankful that you can join us today. We have a special treat for you. Our kids have prepared something uh, for Mother's Day that they would like to share. Uh, we're going to be led in, in a prayer and scripture reading and communion like normal and uh, have a couple of songs. But we just want to know that, want you to know that you are our welcome guest, uh, that we love each and every one of you, and we hope that God blesses you through this worship service today. Let's have a great and uh, enjoyable worship service together, family. Good morning, church. Let's go to God in prayer this morning. Father God, we thank you for giving us this day. We thank you for uh, blessing us with your son. Uh, we thank you for this, his sacrifice on the cross. Uh, for the forgiveness of our sins. Um, God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that you uh, give us um, when we don't deserve it, Lord. Um, God, right now there's uh, crazy things going on in this world, and um, we thank you for being with uh, the medical staff and um, those that are putting their lives on the line to uh, keep the world keep the world and the rest of us safe uh, lord we ask that you continue to watch over them that you guide them and bless them with safety and protection um, god we uh, ask that you bless our leaders um, to uh, lead us uh, out of this mess that we're in um, that you bless them with the wisdom to make the decisions that will um, be uh, good for our country and the world around uh, to help minimize um, this uh, the destruction and um, sickness that's going on right now. Uh, Lord, we ask that you prepare our hearts and minds for uh, this service this morning. Uh, we ask that you um, uh, be with our minister uh, as he brings us this lesson, um, that uh, he may um, articulate it in a way that um, we can uh, digest and understand and apply it to our daily lives, Lord. Uh, it's in all these that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Three, look at the camera. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. We love you. And... <laughs> I'm sorry you have to work a lot, but I know it's hard, but maybe I can do some of your work for you so you don't have to work so much. Avi, anything you want to say? I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day! We love you! Happy Mother's Day, Mom! Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day, Mommy! Hey, Mom, I just want to let you know Happy Mother's Day and uh, that I love you and appreciate you for everything that you do. And, uh, yeah. Happy Mother's Day, we love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom, love you. Mother's Day to all of you awesome moms out there. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for all you do. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, we love you.
Good morning, church. Today's verse is from Psalm 63, 1 through 5, and it reads, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart, you're the Good morning, church. This is the time we fellowship with one another and commune with the Lord. And in doing so, here are some inspirational words to help focus our thoughts and our mind. And they go as follows. Oh no, my wife's voice rang out when she stepped into the kitchen. The moment she did, our 90 pound Labrador retriever, Max, ran from the kitchen. Gone was the leg of lamb that had been sitting too close to the edge of a counter. Max had consumed it, leaving only an empty pan. Max tried to hide under a bed, but only his head and shoulders would fit. His uncovered rump and tail betrayed his whereabouts when I went to track him down. Oh, Max, I mur murmured, your sin will find you out. 
That phrase was borrowed from Moses when he admonished two tribes of Israel to be obedient to God and to keep their promises. He told them, but if you fail to do this, you will be sinning against the Lord and you may be sure that your sin will find you out. You know, sin may feel good for a moment, but it causes the ultimate pain of separation from God. Moses was reminding his people that God sees everything and nothing is hidden from his view. The Bible says everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Though seeing all, our holy God lovingly draws us to confess our sin, repent of it, turn away from it, and walk rightfully with him. May we continuously follow Christ in love today and thereafter. Let's give thanks for both the bread and the cup. God, we thank you for this opportunity to fellowship and to commune with our Lord and Savior as we do so as a collective body, virtually, over the internet. And in doing so, Lord, we express our deep concern of the sins that we may have committed. And Lord, we ask that you forgive us of those sins, sins of omission, sins of thoughts, sins of deeds. Lord, we also thank you for this cup, which represents the shed blood of your son, shed on our behalf for the redemption of our sins. Lord, we thank you for this forgiveness. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and we thank you for you. In the name of Jesus, we offer this prayer. Amen. Well, good morning again, church. Um, we're out here in God's good creation uh, for another great lesson on uh, being created. And today it's a Mother's Day version. And so I wanna call today being created to be loved. And I think there's nothing greater than a, a mother's love. And I know that not everybody has that experience and not everybody has that relationship with their moms, but I'm sure that there's somebody in your life that you have been um, blessed by a woman in your life that has taken over a mother's role for you. And, and there might be some people here also who are suffering with, they wanted to be moms and, and they couldn't be. And, and so I wanna spend a little bit of time. Can we just, we're gonna pray. We're gonna, we're gonna grieve that out together. And then we're also gonna look into celebrating how uh, the love of God and the love of a mother can, can connect. So let's pray together. Dear Father, Lord, we know that you're an awesome God. And sometimes in our life, we don't understand everything that happens and we don't understand why uh, our lives can't always be the way that we hope for, or that we wish for. And I know there are some moms who are struggling during Mother's Day because they wish they could have been moms or they lost uh, a child. And, and so I just want to pray that you bless them during this time and you help them to grieve through that God and, and you give them comfort and you give them peace. God, I also pray for all of our moms today that um, they may have a blessed day and that they know that they are cherished, God. And we thank you for today. We praise in your son's name. Amen. There's a Jewish proverb that says, God couldn't be everywhere, so he created mothers. And for me, I mean, this is, there's no better statement uh, for the way I feel about my mom than that one. Uh, I was blessed. I'm, I'm the youngest of four. And so our lives obviously were busy. And I don't remember a time that my mom missed something. I know that she probably did at some point, but she was at almost every sporting event I could ever imagine. Uh, she was just always available and there. If there was a church event, she was driving and we were gonna go. If uh, we needed to be somewhere, we had this giant 12 passenger van. She adopted many people to be her kids uh, just because she wanted us to be a part of a church or to be active and so we went everywhere. Now that was the good part of it. She was also everywhere uh, when I got in trouble. She just kind of knew. And so I remember in second grade, I got into, I wanna say two fights in one day. My mom wasn't at that time teaching at my school. And so I got home and I uh, decided to 
erase this event that it never happened. The suspension I had was in-house, so I was still gonna go to school like normal and nobody would know about this. Uh, so I flipped the, uh, <clears throat> the, the answering machine tape. That was back when we had answering machines that had tapes. And I flipped it so that you couldn't listen to it. And she kept going, oh, there's something wrong with this tape. What's going on? I don't know, I can't understand. And I just was like, I don't know either, mom. But what I didn't know is that she still was friends with like 90% of the school and the principal and knew I had already gotten in trouble. And so I got in more trouble uh, for that. I remember in third grade in Miss Armenta's class, I remember the teacher and everything. I, when you get in trouble in her class, you'd have to sit on a bench out in the front. Well, this is when my mom did teach at my school and her class just happened to be right across the hall. So what happens when you get in trouble and you sit on a bench and your mom works next door, you not only get in trouble by your teacher, but your mom comes out of her class and comes and has a nice talk with you about, that's not who you are, get it together, get back into class, stop embarrassing me. I don't know if that's what she said, but that's how I felt. And so, you know, moms, <laughs> they really are, uh, can be everywhere. And I even know for my own uh, wife as a mom, she knows everything and sees everything and hears everything. So we have this blessing of having parents who are everywhere and in everything. So I came across some uh, uh, great quotes by some famous people I wanted to read about moms. Um, Abraham Lincoln said this, all that, I have, all that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my mother. And George Washington said that my mother was the most beautiful woman I ever saw. All that I am, I owe to my mother. Um, Irma Bombeck, the, uh, an author, she wrote about moms. She said, when your mother asks you to, for, do you want a piece of advice? It doesn't matter if you say yes or no. She's gonna give it to you anyways. Uh, Mark Twain said that my mother had a slender and small body, but a large heart. A heart so large that everybody's, everybody's joy found welcome in it and a hospitable accommodations. Uh, Winston Churchill, there was like this, uh, well-known thing that a, an editor out there in London wanted to put together a list of every teacher that he ever had and he sent it to Winston Churchill and Winston Churchill said you have it all right except for you missed my biggest and most important teacher my mother uh, there's many just things that that people throughout time know and respect that their mothers have given them that everything that I am and everything that I would ever be is from my mom I feel those same sentiments and I'm lucky that today this sermon is gonna is taking place in my mom's backyard kind of so I get to spend this moment with her too and I feel blessed to do that. So happy Mother's Day, Mom. I know you're watching because I'm sitting next to you. Uh, I just, we just learned so much from our moms. And there's also some biblical things that, that we learned from moms and, and oh, I came across this great, this kind of funny list of, of some things that throughout time we've been taught by our moms. So the first one is this, we've been taught about logic. Uh, maybe you've heard this statement before, or a quote from a mom, if everybody else was gonna jump off a bridge, would you? Just do it. Why? Because I said so. This is good logic, right? Uh, what about foresight? This is a good foresight. Make sure you always have on clean underwear. You don't want to have dirty underwear on if you get in an accident, right? You maybe you heard that one. What about genetics? You're just like your father. Anybody? Maybe, no? Okay. Uh, what about uh, anticipation? Ooh, just wait until your dad gets home. Anybody else hear that one? Um, how about payback? This one I feel. One day you're gonna grow up and you're gonna have your own kids and I hope they're just like you. Ooh, I feel that one, I feel it big time. Uh, and then what about prayer? Ooh, you, you better pray that that stain comes out of the carpet. We've all learned something. And we also learned some things about, uh, uh, from moms in the Bible too. We learned uh, the love of a mom from uh, James and John's mother. James and John's mother was bold. So she had a boldness. We learned about her boldness. She came to Jesus and said, uh, what do I need to do for my sons to be on your left and right hand? <laughs> like, make it happen, Jesus, uh, when you get to the kingdom, when you get to heaven. Uh, we learned about loyalty from Ruth. Ruth went and followed her mother-in-law uh, into a land that she didn't know, with people she didn't know, and, and she had lost her, her husband who was, uh, you know, and, and she went and, and God blessed her loyalty with not only a husband, but also a son. And, and through that son, she became the great grandmother of David. Uh, which also put her in the line of Jesus. So, you know, God, God blessed her with her loyalty. Uh, what about, we have, hmm. What about broken heartedness from Hannah? Hannah, who wasn't able to bear a, a child, uh, found out, it, it poured out an anguish to God. 
and, and said, God, if you can do anything, grant me a son and he will be yours and serve you for the rest of his life. And God blessed her with a son, but she was broken hearted and poured out over and over again. Wouldn't even take, uh, her husband loved her, but she couldn't even enjoy the things that, that he gave her because she was just so broken hearted not having a child. And so God blessed her with that. And she returned and, and gave her son to serve the Lord uh, for his whole life. And, and I just think that there are so many things that we can learn from each of these stories and from, their, and from moms. And today we're gonna look at um, 1 Kings chapter 17. Uh, verses 1 through 16. Now, this is a story where Elijah, uh, there was a, this great famine. There wasn't any rain, there wasn't any dew, um, and there just wasn't things to eat. There's just, things were just drying out. And so God sent him out to this brook and ravens were gonna feed him and all this stuff was happening. And then the brook dries up and God, the word of the Lord comes to Elijah and he says, I need you to go to Zarephath and I need you to, to, to go there and there's gonna be a widow who's gonna be waiting for you and she's going to feed you. And we're gonna start there <clears throat> and it's in verse seven of, of 1 Kings chapter 17. And it says this. Well, you know what? I'm gonna start down in, in verse nine. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, and can you please bring me a piece of bread? As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, that I don't have any bread. I only have a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. As we speak, I was gonna gather these sticks and, and make a fire and go home and make this bread that my son and I may eat and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me and from what you have, bring it to me and then make yourself and your son something. For this is what the Lord, your God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. So he went away, and so she went away and did as Elijah had told her. And there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with what the word of the Lord had spoken to Elijah. Uh, Jesus in, in the Sermon on the Mount, he starts with this phrase in his very last sermon. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of God. Now, a lot of times when you give a, a speech somewhere or you learn public speaking or you do whatever, they try to, they tell you, make your first sentence something that's gonna grab the audience. This had to have grabbed the audience because in this time, if you were poor, a lot of people said that you were cursed by God because of your sin. And if you were wealthy, you were blessed by God. And Jesus flips the script on them. And he's basically saying, when you, are, when you don't have enough, you are blessed. God is still with you. When you've reached the end of your rope, I am still here. When you know that you can't pull yourself by the bootstraps anymore, you cannot do it on your own, I'm here. When we get to this point of our lives, we know that we have to rely on God, that we can't just do it on our own, that God is with us, that he is here. And in this story, this woman has nothing left. The only thing she has left is a handful of flour and a little bit of olive oil. She has no more food. She is going to dry out and be done. I think for us, before we get into how deep this is and how great of a love that she has for God and for her son, I want us to know like, I don't think we strive to be poor in spirit. I also think we don't wanna to be too rich in our spirit either. Sometimes we just wanna be middle class in spirit. We just wanna ride the coattails of Jesus and be able to ask when we need to and he answers, but we don't wanna be too high and, and maybe have to get brought down and we don't wanna to be too low where God really asks us for everything. We just wanna hope that we can slide by, but that's not how it works. Sometimes we, we need to give everything to be of ourselves to be with God. Jesus says in Luke that if we want to be his disciples, that we need to pick up our cross daily, that we need to deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him. And that looks different for all of us. And I don't know what that might look like for you. But in this, in this story, for her to show her love and faith in God, she gave up everything. And what's really interesting in the story to me is that, that Elijah looks at her and says, do not be afraid. And I almost think at this point, 
fear was not the thing on her mind anymore. I think she's past fear. I think fear probably happened when she looked and realized that she only had maybe a week left of food. And she's at the last day and they've probably been starving and really struggling for a while. And it's weird that God asks for her to give it up first for Elijah. Isn't that how all the sacrifice work? You give of your first fruits, you give your best, you give what is left, you give it to God, and then God supplies. And this story, I think she knew that she was at the end of her rope and there was nothing else that she could do to protect her son, to feed him, to give him what he needs, and she was willing to do anything. And she must have been crying out to God because God told Elijah that I have a widow there that I have directed to feed you. And I think she knew that she needed to follow this word of, the, of God. And so she does. And so she, she gives everything else to, to God. If you go through the story with me and let's put ourselves in her shoes, that you get there to your house and you make a loaf of bread for Elijah and you realize that that is the rest of what's in the jar. There is nothing left. You're out. And you go and you present this to him and he tells you to go back home and make something for you and your son. And you go back thinking, here it is, we're gonna die. Or, or maybe, maybe not, maybe she's just like, I know God is gonna provide because I, I gave everything to him and I put this in God's hands. But there is something there of either you have hope or your hope is gone and there's nothing left for you. And so she gets back and realizes there's still flour here, there's still oil. How does that happen? And every day until rain comes back on the land, God provides for her. It was this showing of faith and of love that this mother has for her son, but also first for God. That I love God and he will provide and God will provide for my family and God will provide when there is nothing left that I can do. I don't know if you've ever been to the end of your rope like that where the struggle is real. Let me tell you, there's sometimes where there's nothing left for you to do but hold on to God. If you've ever known somebody who's gone through a 12-step program, there's the first three steps look like this. The first step says, I need to know that I have a problem, that I on my own, I know I cannot overcome my addiction to alcohol. Two, they say you need to believe in a higher power, that only a higher power can restore you. Three is giving your life over to that higher power. For us, there is no higher power than God. God is the creator of the universe, speaker of life, these steps kind of is our journey in this process too. That there's gonna to be a time in your life where there is nowhere else for you to go except for to God. And God loves you. And, and, but first, you gotta go, I can't do this on my own, I got a problem. I've reached the end. Two, I know there's something bigger out there than just me trying to do this. And you pour out to God, God help me through this. Three is you give your life to God. You let him restore you and bring you back to him. We believe that Jesus Christ came to be this connection to us, that we believe that he is our savior and we commit ourselves to that through baptism. This is, this is the story. There is a love that you can feel and usually we feel it the deepest when despair is there. There is a connection that comes through trials and struggles when we're in it together, that we cling to each other and we know that we will get through this together. This is our time as a society and as a church more than ever. Sorry to change subjects. I know we're all struggling with stuff, that we want the world to go back to normal, that we're trying to get through some things and we're going to a point where there is nothing that can solve this except for God who we cry out to and pray to that he can help us overcome it. But what can we do in the process of waiting? I think we do it by giving our, our hope and our trust to him that we can learn from this mom who shows a great deal of love not only to, to her son, but first to God. God, I know that you can help overcome the situation that I can't get through on my own. And that through you and listening to your word and following it, that you will provide. This is a moment that maybe God has put into you that you are being called to help somebody else who's struggling. And maybe you're being called to be stretched further than you think you can. Can you do it with faith that God, God is with you? Do not be afraid. You know, they say that uh, the words do not be afraid has been mentioned in the Bible 365 times. Uh, I don't know if that's like a real thing or somebody made it up so they can use this cool slogan that in the Bible, there's a, a message of do not be afraid for each day of the year to give you hope. I don't know if that's true or not, but I know God tells his people that a lot. Do not be afraid, I'm with you. Do not be afraid, do not lose hope for I am your God. Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid for I'm with you and I will not leave you nor will I forsake you. 
There are so many of these statements in the Bible to give us hope, to let us know that we're not alone, but also to know that we are cared for. I hope that in the story that we're learning uh, about this great love that God has for us, but also I, I think there's some great commitment and sacrifice that you've already experienced in your life from somebody when God may not have felt there for you, he gave you a mom or he gave you a woman in your life that was a, a mom-like figure to you that comforted you and gave you nurture, that brought you up out of life, back to life when you were left for dead. I hope that this brings you that joy and that peace in your heart, that there's somebody who loves you so deeply in this world that God put in place for you to care for you and to, to bring you into this world. If that strikes you, I hope that maybe today you pick up a phone and, and call that mom or that person in your life that was a mom-like figure to you and, and say thank you. Thank you for making me who I am. Thank you for getting me into this world and, and helping me find my way. Um, I hope that maybe you can look back through the scripture and read the whole thing and, and let God's word speak to you again in a deeper way. And, and I, I wanna give an invitation too. I hope that, that, that you know that we need, you need to give your life to God and that through his son that you have this reconciliation to the father that there is no sin you have in your life that's too big there is nothing that is too, too deep for God's grace to not cover you. But first, you gotta know that you can't do it by yourself, that you need a savior. Two, you gotta believe that God has sent that for you in Jesus. And three, you gotta commit your life to him. We, commit, we believe that we commit our lives to him by accepting Jesus as our savior through baptism. You don't have to have it all figured out. It's the beginning of the process to know that God loves you and he sent his son for you to die for you. And this is the beginning to commit your life to him and to move forward knowing that each and every day you can walk in step with God's grace and to be covered by his love. I hope you make that commitment. If you need to know how to do that, or maybe you want deeper understanding of that, you wanna study the Bible, can you leave me a comment uh, in, in the comment section, either on our YouTube page or on Facebook, and I would love to reach out and, and connect with you and figure out ways that we can delve deeper into this so that you can commit your life to God and feel connected and committed to the family. And I also, I just, I just pray that uh, this is a blessing to you and I wanna pray a prayer of blessing over you and your families during this Mother's Day uh, that you can find ways to connect even if it's virtually during this time. Will you pray with me? Let's pray together. Dear Father, Lord, we are so grateful that you send us angels here on this earth and many of us have had those and we call them mom. And God, I, I'm thankful that for those of us who may not have had that angel in a biological mom, that you have sent us somebody in our lives that has overshadowed us with love to, to help fill our bucket when there was an empty space missing because we were missing that, that void in our life of having a good, uh, godly mother. God, I'm just so grateful uh, in my own life that you've given me a, a godly mother who's helped guide me to who I am uh, and helped me to be the person I am today to be connected to you as much as I am and I'm so grateful for that. And I'm thankful for a wife who's the same way for my children and I know that there's many others who are like that here, God, and I'm thankful. God, I pray that you bless our world and our our, our state, that you can help us to uh, make wise decisions during this pandemic, that we can trust and rely on you, uh, that we can know that you are God who's in control, and that we just pray for safety and for health, and we just pray that our leaders make, that lean on you for wisdom, God. And God, I just pray that we can connect together again soon, that you help offset this, this worldly pandemic and help bring us together, and so the saints can rejoice and, and be glad and, and worship you together, God. God, we are so blessed to celebrate you on this day, this Mother's Day. Uh, and I just pray that you continue to bless us till we meet again. Praise in your son's name, amen. Uh, all right, guys, we hope you enjoy this song on the way out, that uh, you can talk amongst yourselves in the comment section during this time and connect. And, and we will see you uh, Wednesday night for worship, or for class, and then again next Sunday for worship. All right, have a great week, everybody.
So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever God you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus.